Welcome to the Hearthstone Complaint Department Podcast. Hope you are not sodium intolerant. Here are your hosts, Jay and Nick. Take it away, boys. Welcome to the Hearthstone Complaint Department Podcast, where we do a deep dive on the saltiest takes about Hearthstone, past, present, and future. This is not an I Hate Hearthstone podcast, but we are here to unpack all of the things that drive people bonkers about the game, uh, discuss them, and then see how we can turn the smiles or the frowns, depending on your outlook, um, upside down. My name is Jay from This Week in Hearthstone, and while my co-host Nick is on a small vacation right now, we have two very special and very awesome guests. You may know them, you may not know them, but you should know them as Tito Santana and Just a Guy. Thank you both for being my second and third choices for code host this week. And no, I am not going to tell either one of you which was second and which one was third on that list. Can you guys spend a minute introducing yourselves? Sure, I can go first if that's all right. Um, everybody probably knows me, but I'll give you the intro anyway. I am Stephen, just a guy, Georgiou. And in case somehow you haven't seen my tagline everywhere, I am the world's foremost game designer, creator, copyright pending. Um, in case I haven't mentioned it yet, and, and I don't say it very often, uh, but that title is purely through my advanced and superior genetic makeup uh, that allowed both of my children, uh, both my daughter, Cora, and my son, Sage, uh, to become amazing game designers who are currently and actively developing the Hearthstone game as we speak. So now, Jay, I, I have said, you know, obviously we're friends. You know, we've known each other for a little bit. Um, so you don't have to call me just a guy if you don't want to. If you prefer, we could just shorten that to Jay. So that, that might work pretty well if you'd prefer just, you know, for the sake of uh, familiarity, make things a little bit more brief. Okay. Um, yeah, that'll work. You, you don't and think I... there's going to be a problem with JJ and J? It's going to be confusing for those that are not watching the podcast, but, you know. Okay, as long as you're all right with it. I mean, because we could go with JG if you prefer. Um, I, I wouldn't go with JAG. That's actually a really bad sort of foresight on my part not not being able to do that you, you could go with my name steven if that makes more sense but make sure that when you say it you're actually saying s-t-e-p-h-e-n which is of course the way god intended that to be said uh and if anybody out there does sort of slip and accidentally use the word stefan they, they are insta banned it, it is pretty much just a guarantee i i don't care what that basketball player says as far as how he pronounces his name um, th there is literally only one pronunciation for it. So, you know what, forget all that. Why don't we just go with just a guy? It'll be easier, uh, just for the sake of branding. I think it's probably better anyway. Oh, and, uh, this is Tito. So we're good. Go ahead. Let's, let's move on. <laughs> Tito, does anybody need to know you? Um, nope. Nope. Tito rocks, by the way. Listen, we are here today to have a podcast and this episode is titled why we love or hate Hearthstone. And I created this topic a little bit on the fly, and I kind of try to do this to where if I have a guest on, you know, especially with Nick, and um, I try to tailor these episodes based on who we're talking to, because it makes sense. Based on the experience of my guests, um, this is going to be very, very interesting. And I'd like to break it down to, to just say, is you both have unique experiences in the game. Um, some of you are content creators, some of you are maybe uh, more active in the content creation community than others. Um, some of you have been playing this game longer or shorter or what have you. And then, you know, just a guy, you have such a vested interest in this game and you have unique experiences that um, Tito and I do not have whatsoever. So I just like to talk about it. And, you know, we've seen in the past few weeks, um, we've seen ups or downs. Um, in fact, in the past year, if you think about it, since January, when they started, you know, gutting certain things with the way uh, the game would be handled in terms of esports, and then, you know, we just found out a, a, you know, a couple of days ago or what have you, to everybody's chagrin, that you know there would not be a uh, a board for this expansion. So I'd love to just break it down from the both of you, get your experiences. I'd love to know what you feel about how the game is now, how the game is going, what is driving you nuts about the game right now, and then just start talking about it. Um, and let's first, even though, you know, we, we kind of dissed them on the introduction here. Tito, give me your takes on what's going on in Hearthstone right now, why you love it, why you hate it, what's driving you bonkers. Let's unpack. 
Well, first off, I would say if you took the average age of everybody in this horse code uh, on this um, podcast right now, we would be considerable. Um, we'd be considered to be on an upcoming project for Clark Hellscream because we are all apparently elderly. But That's right. We are un we are elderly. There's there's a lot of cross branding conflict going on here <laughs> with <laughs> who's old enough to actually be able to try and take that bit. But yeah, it, it's that's thirty and older, boy. I, I barely remember thirty. Good luck with that. Yeah, I, um, I so, couldn't tell you what I did. Nope, not on thirty. So uh, I actually think things are in a pretty good place right now. Um, I'm going to not be on the hater side of Hearthstone because I I've particularly enjoyed the meta right now. Um, I do think that we could change things up a bit in the way to make the newer cards more prevalent. I know, uh, I know just the guy over there would like to see us playing more with, um, his son Sage's cards than we are currently right now. And I think that they came in, um, with a gentler touch to make, maybe make, watch the power level here make sure nothing got kind of out of control because in, um, the workshop, meta uh we nerfed all the lethality right like anything that was kind of different um became a little too strong and and we went through and uh changed all that like uh wheel of death and and whatnot and then we ended up kind of with a fairly homogenous uh, meta where there's only certain things to do um so i think that they were careful coming into this maybe too careful and I think I'd like to see them uh, raise the power level of some things like Hunter and Mage and whatnot. Um, I was very much hating on Zilliax. Um, I don't care about the... the. I understand the Flood one, the uh, ticking Zilliax is a big problem right now for some people. Um, Zilliax, uh, Kiliax, uh, the one with Reborn and Divine Shield and Lifesteal and Rush, uh, that one gets really annoying because the fact that you keep running into it and they bring it back. Warrior brings it back with hydration station and whatnot and inventor boom. And that was bothering me for the first few days, but then I started playing Sir Finley and everything is all well and right in the world. So, um, I'd rather, rather than get upset and complain, I just adapt. And that's where I'm right right now. I see that your, your, your points are absolutely well taken. And I know that, you know, one of the, one of the things has been said, online and whatnot is is you know there's a there's a bunch of decks that don't have any of the new cards in it if you look at some of the tier one decks now it might not be right this moment as you're listening to the the show or what have you but there's been instances and it's only been two weeks where there was decks that were tier one with no cards and i like to think about that as a, as a good way and a bad way and i would love to be able to find out some insight maybe if someone you know could ask developers these questions you know the the thing that i like about this is you don't need to have some of the cards and you do not need to have you know I, I joked around today in one of the videos you don't need a payday loan to play this game you can go in now if you've been playing this game but something happened and the expansion you know you couldn't get the pre-order bundle or you didn't have enough gold because you spent it on something else you have the ability to still compete and I love the idea of having it to where it's not, listen, you know some games. We're, we're, we're seeing some games right now. We're seeing some instances to where, like, and I'm going to throw it out there, Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap, I have two major problems with. If you don't play some of those brand new cards and spend a gob of money, you're not going to win as many games as if you are buying those things. And I kind of like that making it an even playing field as much as possible um, across the board. There's a lot there. Yes. So I think if we gave Tito a chance to actually introduce himself, we'd be at the end of the pot already. Um, <laughs> I don't, the, the, the first question is, do, do you love or hate the game? I think, I think honestly, at times you love and hate the game and, and you don't necessarily have to sort of pick and choose. You can sort of do that minute to minute almost as far as the current meta goes i think tito's right i think i think my my definition of a healthy game is are there a wide variety of decks that you run into uh even if you play for an hour two hours at a time that, that you sort of run into at any point on ladder or if you're playing uh and wild or any of the other modes so it depends on how how much variety you get because that usually means that a lot of people have found something that they like that they gravitated towards that they decided to play around with certain decks. And, and you're right, you know, you get an expansion that comes out and some of sort of the 
rollover from everything that's been played previously is is the same decks. And, and yeah, I, I don't like that personally just because I want to play some of the new cards and I do think that Perils in Paradise is actually a really good expansion. Um, I think as far as the, the nature of power creep and, you know, are you seeing impactful enough cards with this expansion that you're getting, uh, you know, sort of as much power and, and as much uh, usefulness out of it as you might some of the others. I think that's always a very, very difficult thing for them to work on. I think the problem is that nobody likes it when cards that they have played and enjoyed for, you know, a while suddenly get outpaced. So it, it does become an issue that you end up with, you know, you can't just keep constantly coming out with something that's always going to blow up the meta. You can't always just sort of reinvent the wheel. Uh, when it comes to some of the card design as well. So I think if you get cards that have flavor that works well, I think if you get cards that you can put different decks together that you enjoy the, the way they feel on the play and you can be competitive at the same time, that's a win. And if you see a lot of different decks, that, then it usually means that it's a pretty healthy game. Yeah, I think the meta yeah. is really healthy right now. Um, I think I think what you're saying is true. I think all they, uh, they really need to just dive into the... Um, um, fun, fearless, focusedness of the uh, oh, design process, yeah. and we'll be all set. Mm -hmm. The three Fs forever <laughs> going forward. There was, there's a lot of Fs. Stop. Not okay. if you're being civil. No, we no. Listen, there, there's. I love the flavor of the the expansion. Absolutely, I love all the cards I'm playing right now. I wish a couple of cards were stronger. I wish Zilliax. Um, fell off of a very very tall building and just I'm laid sure there you for are a little going bit. to see balance patches coming no 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 will... and I'm not even a... I'm not oh, upset no, about no, no. but that's that's normal and, and you mentioned Marvel snap and, and Marvel snap has been working uh, on a sort of really obvious uh deployment of their new cards when they come out with the seasons uh, you know there, there's always some overpowered card headlining the season pass because if you want to be competitive you're going to need to play it and if you want to play it you're going to need to buy the season pass and that card inevitably after weeks or potentially a month or so goes by will get some sort of balance correction so it, it it becomes very transparent as to how they often do things to monetize the game which is certainly something everyone needs to try and figure out but they'll they'll, they'll throw something in front of you that you sort of almost have to pay if you want to be competitive, not just for the variety, not just to play some of the new decks, but, but because you're going to see that card almost everywhere because of how they balanced in the first place. But after it's out for a while, you know, then they start talking about how, oh, they're seeing it in far too high a percentage of decks and they really don't like that for the health of the game. And so they'll all of a sudden be either, you know, nerf it or even just completely reinvent some of the mechanics and some of the balance that they have with your cards. So, I mean, th that's the way they got used to doing it. So I, I know a lot of people aren't happy about it, but at least it, it isn't sort of like, you know, something new when it comes to what you expect. That's a difficult thing to do with a game like Hearthstone that's been around for over 10 years. So it's difficult to sort of redo it. I, I think if you wanted to sort of redo the balance level and try and bring things down a bit from where they have crept up at times, I, I think you'd have to go, you know, a full year with sets that for most people would feel underwhelming. And that's a difficult thing to do as well. So it's it's sort of a hard issue to try and address. I actually just saw a TikTok the other day uh, of an old TikTok of Ben Brode saying how they're making the how they're making Snap different by not allowing you to get the collection all at once and all that. And that is the reason why I left uh, Snap in I want to say January or December because I just got tired of not being able to make the card or the deck that I want. And at the time, money wasn't really a thing. Like if I wanted to buy, you know, if I want to spend my income, my, my uh, disposable income, yeah. that should be up on me to do it. And the fact that like, hey, I want to do this and I can't unless I happen to get it out of the cash or I have the right things and I'm not going to spend oodles of money just for the chances of might and all that. So that kind of deterred me from it. Um, but to to the other point though of the like the, we just to finish up more with current meta, um, I do think that the reason why we're seeing such a, a small amount of cards being played right now, why the power level, a, a little bit of like, hey, you want to let the you want to keep the old cards viable, of course, yes, but um, with the tourist um, added, and now having each class has the opportunity to have what nineteen different cards. Um, I, that, that, that is a potential balancing nightmare 
So I bet you they probably rein things in a little bit to just make sure that, you know, we're not losing like Death Knight cards because of the sins of uh, Shaman or whatever Taurus cards going to what. And I, I think that we're hopefully going to see a lot more buffs um, in this expansion cycle than we normally do just because of that very reason. Yeah, I thought I thought when I saw that as well, I was like, okay, these are these are cool, but not like overpowered to where they would be broken to where that would be a problem. Because like it, lofty goals for them to sit there and look at all of this, um, this adjustments that need to be made, and knowing what is in the pipeline and what's coming, you know, down the pipeline in a couple of months or or next year, what have you, and then add like the dual class kind of like, oh yeah, you can have these cards in there. I don't know how they're going to balance it. And all I know is I'm glad I have nothing to do with it. Uh, yeah, I'm balance, I was, balance is, is got to be, I can't even imagine how much nope. time and effort they put into it. But, you know, and, and sometimes something comes out and, and, and some of the decks start to, to shape up uh, in the first couple of weeks. And then all of a sudden you, you do find some outliers. And, and there's been some cards over time that people are like, how did they, you know, ship this one? And, and honestly, you know, they certainly spend all the effort and all the concern trying to make sure things are balanced, but they are doing it with a limited pool of people and a limited amount of time to actually play test. And they are attempting to look at not only the cards that currently exist to, to make sure that they're putting things out that are going to work together and that you can build cohesive decks that, that actually have some themes and that are fun to play with the new expansions, but they're also looking forward with cards that are currently being worked on that nobody has any idea what they're actually planning. So trying to balance that at the same time, it's just, it's an immense amount of work. I can't even imagine. Yeah, I don't I don't ever ask me to balance any game or make decisions on that. I would no no thank you. No thank you. And I, they get, I couldn't do it. They get an um I don't even know what the and they get an exponential amount of game data in the first 15 minutes, 30 minutes of the game being released than even a sizable QA team could uh have tested oh, yeah. in that time. So like, you know, they someone someone picks out this weird card that draws fire spell or generates fire spells and puts it in a deck that no one thought about and all of a sudden they're off to the races and you got some broken meta and people are like, well how did they not catch this? There's no way to catch that. There's you you, you focus on the new cards and the um the archetypes that you're expecting and then someone yeah, I think smart the key comes is I think the key is, and I think when we're talking about complaining, and obviously, you know, there are going to be people that, that are going to use, you know, what they perceive as an imbalance uh, with some of these cards, that, that they're going to complain about it right away. And typically you get people who, you know, the louder you complain, the more attention you get. So that's that's often the reason that you tend to see it. So, you know, a lot of it, yeah, it's, it, <clears throat> you okay? Um, so a lot of it does depend on sort of the reason behind the complaint. I understand being unhappy with with a meta that isn't enjoyable but you know on their part they don't want to overreact they don't want to react too quickly they want to see how things shape out and i'm sure they're also looking at it in terms of you know hey a couple of days a week isn't nearly enough time to actually you know experiment with some of the different deck combinations that are out there and they want to give it a chance you don't want to be coming out with balance patches you know at noon and three o'clock every day so you know you'd like to have something that's reasonable so they they are listening they do hear it you know, and they do also hear how you complain. Believe me, they they, they do. It, it isn't just the content; it's also the context and the attitude. So that that that, that can sometimes be a little bit uh, overlooked when it comes to the way people express things. I I, I was a soft. I'm, I'm a software developer, and I, I came into a project um, a couple of years ago, and they were giving demos daily for this project. And then like, you know, we would have to go into a cycle of they had fixed the things that were wrong and didn't go wrong. It's like, no, this is stupid. We don't have time to do this. All this is now, this is now just like this dumb cycle of repeating the same things and just, we're, we're not making any progress. Everyone's getting frustrated. So I came in, I, I was a project manager on that when I came in and I, I may put it back to like a normal two or three week cycle. And it's like, let, let's go ahead and actually give us time to work on things before we do it. Also, I'd like to just clarify. I, I, may, I made the joke about Zeddy about uh, 20 seconds ago. He's been actually really positive, this expansion. And I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of positive. I'm a big fan of Zeddy. I'm a big fan of positive Zeddy too. So I'm just going off his brand there. That's all. I don't think Zeddy is... I, I don't think Zeddy's overly negative. I think... Like, he's he not wants. sitting there going... He, he, he's carrying... His reputation is, is carrying... Yeah, no, no, no. Today... Yeah. No, I agree. hundred percent. I, I interact with him regularly. I find a, a lot of his posts, you know, actually very funny, very interesting. Right. I think his critiques are measured and reasonable most of the time. I think it was hilarious when he, 
he threw out, uh, you know, sort of uh, asking for the, uh, the, the hero portrait uh, to be given. The heart to be golden, yeah. Uh, yes, for, for everyone. And, and they did. I'm like, that, that's absolutely fantastic. You know, and that, See, that, I, think that shows, I think that shows how the relationship with him and the team itself has evolved. Because I think that no matter how how warranted or intelligent or thoughtful the request was, I think that if the relationship was negative, I think they would have passed over it to begin with. So I think that's a big statement all by itself. And I, I honestly think, think um, sorry, Jay, I think that yeah. um, a big part of that improvement, like, again, we make fun. I, I made the joke is that he has always been kind of had that negative um, uh reputation and he's grown like he's grown a lot in the last few years and i think that most of the time he is very thoughtful and um uh intelligent things i think a lot of the um change um if i'm incorrect was a lot of interactions with your daughter in particular right it was i I think at some point she sort of and, and and i can only speak peripherally on a lot of these things um, I think at some point, you know, sort of the, the idea was, do you just sort of block him and ignore him uh, or, or do you actually attempt to interact with him and see if maybe um, the relationship improves and he understands that, you know, th- there are some issues with the way he's expressed himself in the past. And, and, and this is sort of it's not just him. Th- th- this is this is sort of the dynamic that, that honestly could be said w- with an awful lot of people in the community. He just tends to be more visible than a lot of them. So it, it, it does become a situation where it's like, look. You're, you're talking about complaining and typically you're talking about people being unhappy or angry. And, you know, a lot of how you express that depends on what your agenda is at times. But if you're being honest and people are just reacting genuinely, a lot of it depends on sort of what they're used to. I mean, this is sort of, you know, personal skills, inter, interpersonal skills. How do you, you know, explain to someone when you're not happy about something and, and do you sort of just throw it out there instantly when the thought comes to your head that you're mad or do you actually sort of take a step back, count to 10 and, and then sort of try and present things in a way that, you know, hopefully get your point over without everybody getting lost on how, you know, upset you are about it. So it's I, I don't have a problem with people being mad about the game. I, I understand it, it's normal. It means you're invested. It means that you actually care yeah. about what you're doing and what you're playing. My biggest concern is if God forbid, you know, people ever get to the point where they just are apathetic. It's like, huh, you know, don't care. How's the new set? Mm, you know, fine. Not good. Great. Who cares? I don't play enough. I'm going to go do something else. That's a concern. That, that's yeah, a that's, real worry. That's though. what I was going to say. I was going to say that I would have, I would rather have a measured person with a large following um, you know, going through and just letting everybody know how they're feeling about the game or how their um, how their audience is feeling of the game. Because, you know, if, if you have 100 people watching you or 500 people watching you, you can get an idea of what everybody is dealing with in the experiences. I'd rather have that than nothing. And the fact that there's, you know, vocal supporters, whether, listen, Maybe they said the wrong thing. Maybe they said it not correctly, or maybe they said something that set something off. You know, when you look at text, what happens with text? You don't see a lot of the inference in the text. It's just, you know, I could say I dislike just a guy and it could be taken as a joke. It could be taken as serious. It could be if I'm just putting it in a, in a tweet or what have you. You meet on Tuesdays. Oh yeah. No, every Tuesdays is, is, is it's 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 like therapy. But I'd My rather have that there, than usually. nothing. I'd but, rather have that than nothing. There's a reason why Brian Kibler can be vocal about the problems with the game and yet still get invited to everything. One, he has a big audience. But two, he goes about it in the right way. He's like, this is, okay, I don't like quests, quest lines. Here's why. And it, it does this. And he'll illustrate, he'll, he'll go through and he'll give you a rational approach to, Hey, this is what I didn't like about him. This is what, this is what I think is happening to the game. And I'm, I'm kind of going away from it. And he, you can, you can have, you can have criticism of the design. You can have criticism of the implementation and everything. And you you can, you can do it without being a, you know what about it. Right. And and that's That's the the key. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, when we're talking about, you know, sort of generalities with this and, and, you know, without, without, this is sort of the way things have been over the years that, you know, whether or not uh, people understand it, you typically don't see yourself 
accurately when it comes to how you're actually doing this. So somebody who's angry and they're, they're sort of throwing it out there, they don't always necessarily have a mirror in front of them that actually, you know, shows them exactly how they've been behaving at times. Hopefully they sort of realize it and dial it back. But, you know, and again, I, I'm not a shill for the game. I'm certainly going to be more measured <laughs> in how I, are you okay? Um, you seem to have a cold. Uh, I certainly am more concerned about how the community reacts negatively, not just saying I don't like it or the meta is stale or it's boring or this card you know needs work or I don't know. That's all fine. You know, that, that's that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the level of toxicity at times that people express this anger and express this resentment and then start targeting. They start targeting the devs. They start saying things like they don't care. They don't play the game. They're stupid. They don't deserve to have their jobs. They should all be fired. You know, this is the kind of crap that comes out that becomes not just very personal and very hurtful, but becomes very dangerous and very hurtful because there have been times that my daughter has gotten contacted on personal emails that should not have been known. And, and people will actually go looking for where somebody lives or how to try and get a hold of them. And that's the kind of stuff that becomes really, you've gone from, hey, you need to tone it down a little bit because you're, you're a little overly aggressive with what you're saying you're unhappy about, to you need to disappear. You need to not be part of this community and you need to go find something else to do with your time because this is not somebody that you're ever going to be allowed to interact with people on this level. So that that's where it gets from, you know, it scales quickly at times. And so when you sort of get that mob mentality and everybody's yelling and everybody's screaming and grabbing the pitchfork and the torch, that's when things sometimes can get out of hand. And that's when things get personal. And that's when I've got a significant issue with the way people have frequently over the years, not that you'd see it, not that anybody else is talking about it, but have behaved in ways that you really, you know, from the years that my daughter used to stand up casting in front of a camera and you'd watch the Twitch chat saying the most horrific things, you know, as a father, you'd like to be able to reach through the internet and choke somebody, but unfortunately you can't. So then you sort of have to learn how to deal with it and you don't want to give those people attention. So you have to somehow convince yourself not to even address it. Yeah, to suck That's it when up. things get out of hand. That's when things become really more than a, this isn't a complaint. We're not talking about those people here, but that's when that level becomes really absurd. And and to be kind when you're having the, like it, it's as easy as pecan pie to be, be kind. Right. Um, it's just, it's just that easy. And to, to um, Steve's point about uh, he said that, Oh, do you guys even play the game? I'm in a privileged posi privileged position where I have some devs on my friend list or I'm on discords that they happen to be in and whatnot. And they play. They, they don't just play during work hours. Uh, they play. They love the game. Uh, they play multiple modes. They they love the game. Like, th this isn't just, you know, uh, no thank you. Um, I've had enough at work today. They they go home, have dinner, I assume, and then get back on and start playing again. So um, they're invested. And, and if, no, if, if nobody, we're frustrated... Nobody cares more about the health of the game the enjoyability of the game. You know, my son, this is, you know, his first expansion is set lead. I'm sure there will be, you know, God willing, many more down the road. But he obviously is very aware. As, as much as he's the smartest human being I know, that he has almost no activity on social media whatsoever, God bless, he's still obviously aware of the video reviews and what people are saying about the set and what they're talking about. And, and so obviously they care. This is... This is months and months and months of work that they've put into doing this. And this is their career and their livelihood, but it's also their passion. This isn't just a paycheck. This isn't just a job they go to nine to five and then they check out and go do something else. This is what they want to do for a living. And this is what they absolutely love and are passionate about. So of course it matters more to them than it does to anybody else. And I think sometimes that gets lost. So sure. And you could, you could be there Saturday, Saturday night, 11 o'clock. At night, you could you could put something out there on the internet. Be like, "Oh, I'm so sick of blah blah blah," or "I'm having an issue with blah blah blah." You might get an answer from Hat within about twenty seconds. He's not working, but he's working. He's always working. Yeah, so the, I've the, seen these, that like four times. Uh, that he's you're not paying attention. Under, under as much as he's appreciated, he will always be underappreciated. 
his his effort and the time and his talent and skill and ability the guy is the nicest most helpful individual as long as you don't try and serve him meatballs I, i'm gonna save tito from having to jump in no no that. no i wasn't going there but i do want to say so i said i didn't really have any complaints about hearthstone i do have one complaint and okay. it is it is that the the management team that i don't know who who they are or whatever they that they keep putting the community team hat and the devs in positions where they are catching a firestorm of crap, which could have easily been avoided if one, they prepped ahead of time or like said, Hey, by the way, community, um, what do you think they're going to react to when we change all these quests to make you summon 60 minis? Oh, I don't think they're going to be very happy. Okay. Then how can we do it better? Or even just, you know, maybe say, Hey, we're doing X. How should we approach this in a way that's not going to anger the community? Okay, well, maybe we communicated about it before they figured it out on their own. Okay, so like, I, I my 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 criticism is, give the team, give team five, for management, give team five, things to work with, so that way we're not in a reactive state and we're in a proactive state. That bothers me. But outside of that, um, I'm I'm loving where the game is. It's a fine line. I mean, you know, speaking from just life experience, not speaking specifically to game development experiences. Listen, everybody has a role. You know, our role is if we choose to, is we're going to play this game or this game or this game. Their, their role is to make money. And in the middle of both of those situations is the development team of said game. You know, I put in the show notes and I, we're just going to say it now. I was going to save it for later on or what have you. Um, I feel that every decision that fans are happy about that is positive to the game, whether it be Hearthstone specifically or, or other games, but we're just speaking specifically about Hearthstone right now. It's most likely 99.99999% made by a developer. If you're looking at these situations that you didn't like, and you're looking at these situations where they decided that the board state should be, you know, crossed off the list because maybe it was a little bit too much money or what have you, you know, I, I'll bet you, I'll bet you anything that that was not made because the 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 company that's trying to make that money and trying to work out that money is listen they're trying to make money and if they have the little knobs because remember they have all the data, you know, to pull through and it's like hey. Can we make 2% more by taking this out? Can we make 7% more? And then it's our our job as game players to say, hey, are we going to play this game? Or are we going to go over here where we like the monetization priorities? If Hearthstone disappeared today, I'm not going to, to, to Marvel Snap. It's just ridiculous. I'm not paying $70 for a card in any way, shape, or form you know, that situation, but that's my personal preference. Um, and I think that's the tough part. And I think that's the biggest situation. And I'm a very positive person. It drives me nuts that there's that clash between the two of them. Because if you look at the lot of situations, it's yes, it's balanced, but it's also about monetization. And the devs aren't even in the middle of that. Yeah. That's so, I mean, I can, I can address that to a certain extent, if you'd like my perspective. Um, there's an awful lot of moving parts when it comes to the decisions that are made when it, it, it often are, are these sort of controversial things that, that become a problem. I, I think that's, that's always a concern. I, I think that if anybody on the dev team a actually sort of ended up with the ability to influence uh, what they wanted to do as far as spending money, I, I think there would have been parades when this expansion launched. I think there would have been, you know, gold plated cards mailed out to everybody. I think there would have been an awful lot of fun things added to it that cost them a ton of money. Obviously, that's not the way you want the game to go either. I think right. there is an issue with the game at heart that becomes a little bit of a, a tug of war with wanting to deliver the best product possible, wanting to deliver as, as enjoyable an experience and new content and, and new features and, and everything that people are sort of excited and looking for when they come out. But at the same time, it, it is a business. And, and there are people who are responsible for attempting to figure out how do we monetize the game so that it can continue for another 10 years. And I think the biggest difficulty is that once you start with what people expect, once you start with quests, daily rewards that are set, trying to change those in a way that on any level is going to be perceived as simply trying to make people pay more. 
no matter how you dress it up or how you sort of try and balance it, it's going to become a problem. I, I think that no matter what you change that isn't what people expect, it's going to be a problem. So you've really got a difficult time trying to figure out how to sort of evolve the game and add things to it. Battlegrounds is, is huge. Trying to figure out how do you integrate Battlegrounds, which really wasn't something they anticipated becoming the huge runaway hit that it is. So they really didn't sort of have everything maybe figured out when they put it out there to monetize that game and the way another company yeah. would have had it been a sort of standalone release. Um, Arena has gotten an awful lot of attention lately for how much more engagement and how much more active and enjoyable the experience has been. And that's something that that honestly was my son taking the initiative to work on a, a mode that he loved and had played almost exclusively uh, a lot when he first got into playing the game long before he ever came onto the team and, and doing something there. Those are all kinds of possibilities that hopefully are not few and far between when it comes to the way the ongoing development is. And to make those things possible, you do have to have resources available and you do have to have the ability to sort of divert some of the focus and some of the funding to other things as they try and grow the game. So it, it is a tug of war. You, you know, if, if people had their way, you'd get every card for free. They'd all be gold. You, you, you wouldn't have to, you know, <laughs> go and, and grind anything out. I, but obviously that's not expected or realistic. So trying to figure out how they change things is always going to be a challenge. And yes, they pretty much realized right off the bat that had they communicated these things, what they were changing, why they were changing it in advance, it certainly would have been a lot easier for people to understand and deal with. And then you communicate and you listen to what people have to say. That, that I think going forward, hopefully, is, is what should be the biggest takeaway from the recent uh, issues that everybody's had. So every time, every time, so messaging aside, every time they finally get to the point where they've given, they've changed something, is ended up in the player's benefit, even the free player, free to play player's benefit. And I'm okay with that. Every time they like Hearthstone to me, uh, and again, I'm a whale. I have you know the the full, almost the full sets and everything like that. But um, every time you get a lot of free stuff, you get a lot of free stuff. You get um, the rewards. Rewards track is probably one of the better ones out there. You get um, every time you have an opportunity. Yes, they need to monetize things. So I know people are like, oh, they're taking away the board so they can sell us pets. Yes. I understand that, but if they just message it better and what you just said, as far as, Oh, they'll get it right. And maybe they'll get it right. And they'll actually do better messaging. This has been the same problem that they've had for the last yeah. 10 years. Yeah. So and I don't I think, believe that they're going to learn anything there. I, I would hope, I think, I think one of the biggest things and Jay touched on it earlier with, with sort of the, 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 the me, me or Jay. out there. Uh, yeah, exactly. JJ or Jay um, talking about, sort of how the devs are the ones and and hat and everybody on the community team sort of are the ones on the front lines who tend to take the brunt of this when when all the blowback starts I, I think that one of the things that that all of the developers really enjoy doing when things are positive is interacting with the community um, I, I think being out there and being able to talk about what they're doing and being able to explain what they were thinking and some of the backstory stuff I think it's very cool people are very interested in hearing some of the behind the scenes stuff but the worse things are with the interactions, the less they're interested in interacting because, I mean, honestly, it becomes a huge quality of life issue. It's mental health problems. You know, these people are working all day and they are playing the game and then you sort of go out there. It'd be like it'd be like spending all day rehearsing a play. Then you give a performance and then you start talking to the crowd afterward and the crowd wants to tell you what a crappy job the director did. And you're like well, I tried to do the best I could. And what did you think of my performance? And they just want to talk about how the screenplay was terrible. And you're like, well, I'm sorry about that. But, you know, I wasn't the one who wrote the play. And then you're just, that's where this tends to go. And I do think for all the things that I'm sure at times he did not do as well as he should have, having Ben Brode when he was heading up the team, it was at least a benefit because you had a very visible, a very vocal person who at least you knew who was going to take the hit and who you knew was going to be the one responsible for having to explain what was going on. So I do think that often the other members of the team try and fill that place, but it can be very difficult to do when you're, you're sort of not the one making all the choices and the decisions. So it, it, it is a challenge. It is really difficult. Well, I mean, so at, le at least Tyler is very visible in public and we get to interact with him a lot. And we, he's always communicating with us, right? 
I'm sorry. My, my, my cut out. I wasn't sure what that's okay. We'll, he's we'll having, he's been having mic problems selectively all night. We'll figure it's that in, in, in post-production. We'll get it. Hey, that. how about we go through, um, we go through and we do mailbag. Okay. Voicemail. Whatever we want to call it, I don't care. Here's the bumper for it because now we have bumpers because I'm getting up there, you know, moving on up. Oh, okay. my goodness. You are, you are old, too. I get it. I know. I know. Go ahead and explain what an answering machine is to most of the people listening now. So there's this, see, we can't use the record analogy anymore because now records made a comeback and now everybody knows about records. So I just bring it up to where you ever seen an eight track. Ah, there we go. Okay. So we have one today, um, only because it's very relevant to the conversation. Um, we we're, we're just going to do one today and then we're going to unpack it for a little bit. Um, this is from a, you know, super anonymous caller. Trust me, bro. Uh, let's listen to it right now. And this right, is the so, last episode of this uh, this this podcast. It's done. There's nothing else. Eight to say. episodes is a pretty good run. Congratulations. Seriously, it, I I I it's think like it's pretty. The the idea is also when you're thinking about we talked about like obscure references that the younger generation wouldn't get. Timothy O'Leary. What was that guy on? Like literally. Anyway, go ahead, Tito. <laughs> So, so I have a few few points of that last caller. He's making um, notes for this guy's call, which I honestly, know, I, I have it. no notes. I, I don't okay, think I no. can argue with a word. No, no, no. I have a few notes. One, this guy says he was on psychedelics. He sounds like he maybe did an edible once and was too anxious to ever do it again. That, that, that's that I, he does. I think he's being disingenuous there. Sixties were a um, different time, Tito. You might remember those. I don't. Um, 
the anomalies were good. The anomalies, I enjoyed the anomalies. And I thought they came back for just the right amount of time at the right per. I know a lot of people don't like them. They have that kind of already a feeling that, hey, I'm not going to like anomalies because they happened before. This was a nice curated pool. Um, it was only a week. And for me, I really enjoyed it because it made it so I had to think about my next plays a little bit more. So I had to mulligan. I'm like, okay, anomalies um, this were a is lot the anomaly. Like Genin, they were a lot like Genin Baku. A lot of people, yeah. when they heard got really crazy over it and then it showed up and people went oh it's really not that big a deal <laughs> yeah. but, but I, I i thought it gave you an extra step and how like okay how am i going to plan out this game now because i now have this additional level thing and i thought it was very interesting thirdly i'm pretty sure this guy that called has called into my podcast bread and butter and he he was so mad that he got um forced into buying a golden mini set and they they weren't going to give him his money back so this oh, guy can, is a constant i can tell you from you know? personal experience that's a rough ex that's that's rough Customer service is not that helpful. And even if you have an inside track on anybody on the team, they, they don't they don't really do anything for you either. So that, that can be very frustrating. I can understand somebody complaining about that. And my final Why point would... is Go he talks so long for so long. He sounds like somebody that just wants his kids to listen to him and they won't. Like they won't. he just wants to talk to somebody. That's it. Isn't that why we're all here? We just want to talk to somebody and this is cheaper than therapy. I only listen. I talk like this. I talk on this podcast and everything because I only understand about forty percent of what my daughter says. There you go. Literally, no cap. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to mute you because that just doesn't like. I don't. There's a couple of them also that I have no idea what she's talking about. Like, I'm not even going to ask. I tried to Google it and I can't even figure out how to Google it. And I work in search engine optimization. If anybody on this podcast would know how to Google, it would be me. Anyway, um, thank you all for calling. Listen, we want to hear your saltiest takes on a card, a class, a set, specific match, maybe a previous caller. So please, please go to speakpipe.com slash HS complaints and tell us what happened. We'd love to hear from you. And I really think we've said a lot and I really don't want to get us into any trouble and have me cancer canceled before episode 10 so what i'm going to do is i think we've said a lot i'm going to i'm going to wrap it up right here but before that i'd like to just go ahead and make sure that i'm thanking my guests for coming by and then give them a chance to let everybody know and i'm sure there's probably just a few not many if you know me you know them uh please tell us where the 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 podcast listeners are going to find you next go ahead Go ahead, Tito. Take your time. No, no, you go first. You had, you had the thing up. He He's had the thing up for you. Pay attention. He did. Uh, yeah, he He's had the thing up right there. Oh, look, it's me. Oh, Good Lord. I mean, what not really. Psychopath puts that together. Oh my goodness, you don't really look at that every day. Uh, that that is where you can find me. Look at that. It's right there. Uh, I I tweet upon occasion. I do once in a while, rarely, but once in a while, do some content that. Uh, very few people look at. So I guess that's that's sort of where you can find me. A little bit on YouTube, a little bit on Twitter. Uh, I, I maybe eventually Tito's pushing me to try and get on TikTok more. But boy, that's that's for them hip youngsters. I'm not really sure about that. We'll see. You're mistaken. I want you on Twitch. I want you to actually create a setup on Twitch and then use it before it gets discontinued. <laughs> Thanks. I'll, I'll see what I can do. I appreciate the positivity and the encouragement, though. Also, so this podcast takes a little bit of time, nothing crazy or whatnot, but I have to prepare things or what have you. The longest part of my entire week for this podcast was this screen right here, trying to get <laughs> everything put together for this. It's not even right half now. of all these links. Oh my God. Seriously, this is only a few of it. Tito, we kind of like left you in the lurch a little tiny bit in the beginning. So go ahead. This is your time now. I'm counting. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and TikTok at Tito Santana HS. You can also find me and listen to me on the Bread and Butter HS podcast and the Talking Hearthstone podcast, both which you can find on the podcatcher of your choice and on YouTube. I talk a lot of Hearthstone. I love a lot of Hearthstone. This is why I wasn't complaining about Hearthstone. Jay, I apologize. I think we kind of went in tangents that weren't exactly the direction you were planning on today. But when you get this old men, these two old men rambling, you never know what you're going to get. That never happens. No, I
I loved it. It was awesome as always. Listen, you can find me at This Week in Hearthstone. You listen, you're listening to this episode now. You know how to get a hold of me. I want to thank both my guests, Tito, Santana, and Just a Guy, for coming on and potentially getting themselves in trouble with your family. I appreciate you. And that is it for the Hearthstone Complaint Department podcast. And listen, we do not have a tagline yet. I know it's been eight episodes. We do not have a tagline. But if we did, it would go right here. See you guys next week.